Hi there, welcome to Cooking with Dan. Today we're gonna to be cooking a real winter warmer, some food that's good for the soul. It's braised blade of beef in red wine. Uh, it's as simple as that. We're going to serve it with some beautiful uh, variations of cauliflower. This one here is called a Romanesque cauliflower. The flavour is unreal. Uh, presentation wise, it just does, it looks absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful vegetable. Uh, good old fashioned um, normal cauliflowers. These are all picked uh, straight out of Boston, Lincolnshire. They're super fresh. We've got some uh, beautiful Vita Greens, as always. Our friend Chris growing these for us, uh, creating wonderful, wonderful micro leaves, packed with flavor uh, and super good for you as well. These ones are a, a really peppery one. We've got nasturtium. We're also gonna uh, pair this with a English cob nut or hazelnut, as most people um, know them as. Uh, we've just lightly toasted some of these off. Cauliflower and hazelnut is a fantastic com uh, combination. Um, so let's get to, the, to this cooking this one. So what we've uh, prepared earlier is the braised blade of beef. Now, the feather blade is uh, one of the most cheapest cuts of beef uh, that you can get from the butcher's shop. Um, and it's got loads and loads and loads of flavor. The best way to prepare this is to make a red wine sauce and to seal the beef off, submerge it into your red wine sauce, and this has been slowly cooking around 90 degrees, 100 degrees in the oven for around six hours. You just keep turning that over until, it, until when you touch it, it feels like it's about to fall apart. Like any good braised piece of beef, whether it's the cheek or the feather blade, so important that it's just cooked to the point where it's fallen apart. So that's all ready to rock and roll. Now with such a rich rich sauce and a rich cut of, cut of meat. It's very easy to make a, create a plate of food, which after you've eaten it, you just feel stuffy and you don't feel, you know, you feel heavy. Uh, so what we've done is we've, instead of a mashed potato or, an, or any type of potato, we've taken cauliflower, and we've cooked it down in hazelnut milk and also added some toasted hazelnuts to it. So in there, that's just a softened uh, cauliflower with toasted hazelnuts and hazelnut milk. And what we're going to do now is add this to the food processor. So in we go with the cauliflower and cob nut. Pop that in there. Sure that's twisted into place. There we go. While that's blended and emulsifying. As always, always like to use a little bit of rapeseed oil to finish this puree. The nuttiness from the that, the natural nutty flavour from the oil complements the puree so well. Wow. A couple of drops of lemon juice. Until that's beautiful and glossy and smooth. So we have our puree ready to go. The next stage of this dish is to, uh, we're going to toast off a little bit of garlic. And we're also gonna roast off some of our different variations of cauliflower. So into a pan, we're gonna go with a garlic infused uh, rapeseed oil this time. Garlic and beef is a uh, marriage with uh, and red wine that just flavors that all make sense. We're not trying to overcomplicate everything here. This is certainly a dish which should do exactly what it says on the tin. So 
So in we go. Some different variations of the cauliflower. We're carrying that theme through using the rapeseed oil with its nutty flavour. This dish has got hazelnuts on it. If we were just using a bog standard vegetable oil or an, an olive oil, you're going to start to confuse and mask the natural flavours of things. Whereas the rapeseed oil in this dish is complementing it and adding layers and layers of flavour to it. What we're looking for here is just to take on a little bit of colour. Just keep moving them around. Pop them into the oven. Then we're going to take a little bit more of our garlic oil. Some shaved garlic. Just gently fry that off. This is going to give the dish a real fantastic texture. It's going to take our beef now. Bring this back up to temperature. God, that smells amazing. That's ready to rock and roll. Just while that's there, we can start to plate our dish. So right here now, we're gonna go start with our puree. As you can see there, just because we finished it with a about 50 mils of that rapeseed oil. It's got that lovely glossy shine to it. Absolutely no dairy in this one whatsoever. So it's, as well as it tasting rich, as well as it tasting uh, f packed full of flavor and naughty, it's actually really quite good for you. Start. Plenty of that on the plate. Next up, we've got some toasted hazelnut crumb. I always like to have a few, just a couple of different variations, different elements of the ingredients that we're using. Some whole hazelnuts. We're just gonna crush these down lightly on our chopping board. And if you feel like, you know, you, you don't really like hazelnuts or you want to try something different, almonds work really, really well. If you can pick up smoked almonds, uh, walnuts would work absolutely fantastic with this. Cauliflower and walnuts is a really amazing combination as well. Take our roasted cauliflower. Chopped toasted hazelnuts. A lot of people I talk to about using lemon juice in cooking, they get confused. They think that lemon should, you know, it should either be used as in desserts or in drinks. But we use lemon juice in our restaurants and when we're cooking all the time, like we use salt. So important that you always get that contrast of sweet and sour right. Lemon juice, if used properly, just brings out the flavor. It works like salt in extracting and bringing out the natural flavors of things. We're going to take our toasted garlic, just a few little shaved pieces of that on there. Again, this is just a great texture. Not too much that it becomes overpowering. We've just got some lightly caramelized onions as well that we're going to sit the beef on. The real star of the show, 
the blade of beef. I just want to show you how this should be, exactly how it should be looking when you know it's good to go. Take that onto your chopping board. In fact, instead of using a knife, I'm just going to use a spoon. This will show you exactly how that beef should be falling apart. Take your braised blade of beef, place that on top of the onions. We'll take some of our braising liquor on that. And the final element of this dish, just to give it a little bit of pepperiness and a little bit of heat, it's our beautiful, freshly picked nasturtium leaves. Here we go, raised beta beef.